right. Two lectures left. So we've got this lecture today. We've got review on Thursday. We have an exam over three lectures next Tuesday. And then after Thanksgiving, we have one more lecture. That is, the material is only on the final exam. Because of the hurricane, we have to, I had to shift everything around. And so it, I couldn't get it to fit on this exam. Okay? So we have one, one lecture at the end that's only on the final exam. Today is on the reproductive system. This and reproductive <laughs> systems, because some textbooks, some classes, like to classify male and female reproductive system as separate systems. And to me, that's just making it more complicated than it needs to be, because I'm sure there are professors that like to say, name the 12 syst organ systems. And somebody puts reproductive system, and they sit there for the next two hours, banging their head against the desk, trying to figure out what the last one is. In a reality, they just want a male and female reproductive. It's the integumentary. What about the integumentary? Or the endocrine. If they forgot one? Or the lymphatic. People always forget about Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're kind of invisible. They're not like skeletal or muscular, right? So today is reproductive. <coughs> For the most part, though, the reason they split them apart into male and female is because unlike the other systems, they really are incredibly, incredibly different between the male and the female. We did not talk about male and female respiratory system, right? Male and female muscular system, it doesn't matter. It's the same. So the reproductive system, we are going to more or less talk about them separately. There are two parts. <coughs> two parts. I got a cough drop. <coughs> two parts to the lecture. Male reproductive system is the first one in the Czech textbook, so that's what I want to talk about first. And the female system is second. The male reproduct reproductive system has four primary parts. Number one are the testes. The testes produce sperm, which are the, the, the reproductive cells, and they also secrete hormones. We'll talk about those hormones, but primarily this is testosterone. We, it also includes a system of ducts that allows fluids to flow from one location to another. We'll talk about each one. The couple, first couple have funny names. Third one is more or less self-explanatory, ejaculatory duct. And then there's your urethra, which we learned about in the urinary system. It's the same two. Then there are some glands that go along with the system. There are, there's the seminal vesicles, which we'll talk about, the prostate, and the bulbourethral glands. And then finally, there is the more structural parts, which include the scrotum and the penis. So starting at the top, testes located here, inside the scrotum. Penis hangs outside of the scrotum. The seminal vesicles are located behind the bladder here. So this is an empty bladder. Coming up from the testes, we have the ductus deferens, or the vas deferens. So this is a duct that's going to carry the products of the testicles up to seminal vesicles. Then we have the ejaculatory duct leading from the seminal vesicle down into the urethra. So here's the urethra, as you can see, where the bladder is going to empty urine into the same tube leading to the outside as the seminal vesicle.
prostate is here. We'll, we'll learn what it does. But what I want to point out with this image up here is in older, particularly older men, problems urinating can be a big deal. And especially if you watch sports on TV, there are a lot of commercials for drugs that help to shrink your enlarged prostate. Okay? They, they refer to it as BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia. But looking at this, you can see why. If this is the prostate, what's going to happen if that swells up? It's going to close the urethra. And so that just is, is an easy explanation of how that works. The prostate has nothing to do with urination, but if it swells up, it's going to pinch off the urine. <coughs> So, in the testes, we said this is where the sperm is made. And sperm is made through a process called spermatogenesis. Sperm genesis. So this is going to occur in the testes, specifically in the seminiferous tubules. And the way sperm is made is meiosis. We learned about mitosis, right? PMAT. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. That is for a body cell that is going to divide and create two new body cells. In how many chromosomes are in a normal body cell? Do you remember? 46, 23 pairs. When we make sperm, also when we make an egg, we can only have one of each pair. Because one of each pair comes from the sperm, the other of the pair comes from the egg. If a sperm has two of a pair, that's not going to work. If an egg has two of a pair, that is not going to work. And so we undergo, instead of mitosis, we undergo meiosis. We'll learn the stages of meiosis. Luckily, meiosis is very, very similar to mitosis. Okay? My meiosis 1 is essentially mitosis. And then there's an extra step at the end. Put them together, and you get meiosis, which in a male is spermiogenesis or spermatogenesis. The very first, this process makes four sperm cells, and those sperm cells are haploid. That term haploid means one copy of each pair. Haploid means one copy of each pair, where diploid, D-I-P-L-O-I-D, means two, die for two. So most cells in your body are diploid. Sperm and eggs are haploid. A mature sperm cell which we saw, I think, the first or second lab of the semester, has two main parts. There is the head, where the DNA is located, and then there's the tail, which is used for swimming. At puberty, when a male hits puberty, GnRH, which is gonadotropin-releasing hormone, gonadotropin-releasing hormone, causes the anterior pituitary gland to secrete two things which lead to which maturation of the male reproductive system. First is luteinizing hormone or LH. This causes testosterone produ production in the testes. <coughs> the anterior pituitary is also going to release follicle stimulating hormone or FSH, FSH and the testosterone induced by luteinizing hormone together cause spermatogenesis. So we need two hormones in order to make sperm. We need FSH and testosterone, but testosterone is made in response to LH. So in reality, we need LH and FSH. And as long as the LH, the testosterone pathway is working, 
We'll make sperm. So this is my answer. <coughs> so up here, we have diploid cells. That is what 2n means. Think of it as 2 times the number of pairs. Okay, We have 2 for each pair. A haploid cell will be 1n or just n. So up here we have what we, we, what we would consider a normal cell. It's a diploid 2n cell. It's going to undergo meiosis, which we said includes <coughs> meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 <coughs> takes a 2n cell and it is going to divide it. And so once we divide, we now have two cells, and this is essentially going to be like mitosis. Okay? I put this up here because this is the figure from your textbook. I don't really like this though, because these should be thought of as two n. Okay. So in reality, when we before we went through mitosis, what had to happen, mitosis, what we learned before, what had to happen to the number of chromosomes in a cell? They divide. Before they divide, in, in interphase, what, say they again? Multiply. They have to multiply. And so a cell that is normally 2n, there's normally two of each, have to replicate that. And so before division, we normally consider that to be 4n. There are two pairs of each copy. And so here, we take a cell which has normally divided into two diploid cells. And then we're going to make two new cells just like mitosis. What I want you to do is think of meiosis 1 as mitosis. Same thing, different name. And the only reason it's a different name is because it doesn't stop there. It then goes through meiosis 2. It's going to divide again without replicating its chromosomes. So let me grab a mark. How many chromosomes do we say a normal cell has? 46. 46. <clears throat> if I am going to replicate that cell, I need to replicate the DNA before I do it. Mm -hmm. And so just before a cell enters mitosis, or meiosis 1, how many chromosomes is it going to have? 92. 92, yes. We're going to double the number to get down to 92. But then we undergo mitosis or meiosis 1 to make two cells that each have 46. So is that essentially transcription? Transcription is DNA to RNA, which is separate. This is DNA replication, going to 46, 92. So if we were doing mitosis, we would be done. These two cells would go on their merry way. But this is meiosis, and so we need to undergo meiosis 2. <coughs> Say it again? One more division, but we're not going to replicate before we do it. And so this 46 gets split into two halves to give 23 and 23. Same thing with this one. So basically, we started with a normal cell, we doubled its DNA, and then we divided twice. Once, twice. And so one single cell is going to give four sperm cells, each with half the normal amount of the DNA. <coughs> After we finish meiosis, what we end up with, these 23 chromosome cells, are called spermatids. 
and then they mature into mature sperm cells. That's what we just went through. So you can see it again, kind of in a, a more graphical picture rather than numerical. And so we're going to split, just like we did in mitosis. We have telophase, anaphase, metaphase, prophase up there. And, but then we split again without redoubling our DNA. <coughs> so that testosterone that we made, not only is it important <coughs> and required to make sperm, but it also re is required for the formation of mature male sex organs. And so it's going to control the growth, development, so think, think of this whole process has to start working inside, and then also once a male is past puberty, we still need testosterone in order to maintain this process. It is also important in other parts of our body, though, completely separate from reproduction. Testosterone is a male hormone, not just a male reproductive hormone. And so it is also going to stimulate bone growth. So if, if a man is low on testosterone, they can suffer from low bone density or osteoporosis and also protein anabolism. Anabolism is also the, a term for catabolism. Do you, do you remember what anabolism and catabolism are? Yes, catabolism is breaking it down. Think of cat. Cats destroy things, right? So you have to remember that anabolism is the same as catabolism. <coughs> I'm sorry, I said that completely backwards. Mm -hmm. I said, did you say something? <laughs> you, 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 you got the PhD. I'm not, yeah. Anabolism is not the same as catabolism. Oh. Anabolism is the same yeah. like words, but not the yeah. same. Anabolism way. is the opposite of catabolism. Anabolism is the building. Okay? Anabolism is the building of protein. So think of male athletes that want to cheat. <laughs> what do they take? Steroids. Yeah. Steroids, including testosterone. And if you look at a male athlete that is taking hormones, particularly they testosterone, say it again? I wouldn't say that, but <laughs> object objectively, how could, what is a, what, what do they look like? Big, muscular. Very big and muscular. <laughs> Extra testosterone can help to make protein, and where do we think of protein in the body? Muscles. 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 Testosterone is also going to lead to secondary male sex characteristics. What are examples? Facial hair. Facial hair. The deepening of your voice. Deepening of a voice. Think, not just <laughs> not just facial hair. Everywhere. Body Our hair. Like hair. Okay. What about head shape? What's the difference? More get longer. Squared, More squared jaw lines. Smaller heads. Yes. I, I wouldn't say smaller. <laughs> no, I guess the, I guess the, the large body makes the heads look smaller. Than the <laughs> smaller. <laughs> Technically, it is a squared jawline, not small head. <laughs> also in the testes, we may inhibit. Inhibit inhibits FSH. And if by inhibiting FSH, we inhibit sperm production. So inhibit is one of those proteins, or one of those hormones that has a descriptor or descript what's the word I'm looking for? I'm trying to blank. Descriptive. Descriptive, descriptive, yes. Title. I was trying to make it a more complicated word. Yeah, it's descriptive. I was trying to say des descriptatory. Well, it's, it's, not not it's not a word. It's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> not a word. <laughs> yes. Inhibit has a descriptive name. It inhibits 
FSH, which in turn is then going to lead to an inhibition <coughs> of per spermatogenesis. Once the sperm are made in the testes, they're going to be moved into the epididymis. Don't say that. Yeah. Don't say that ten times fast. Epididymis. This is where the sperm are going to mature. And so the spermatids are made in the testes, and then they move outside of, of the testes into this location <laughs> where they are going to mature. The vast deferens stores the mature sperm and then is going to allow them to get into the urethra to be ejaculated. The ejaculatory ducts are made from a combination of ducts coming from the seminal vesicles and the vas deferens, which then lead into the urethra. So here we have anterior pituitary. Anterior is in front which makes luteinizing hormone, LH, and FSH. LH causes the testicles to release testosterone. The testosterone, along with the FSH, causes the production of sperm. <coughs> Going on a couple weeks here. So the seminal vesicle is a gland that creates an alkaline or basic fluid that is viscous that creates an environment that allows sperm to survive. Sperm prefer a basic alkaline environment. So the seminal vesicles are going to make that fluid. The prostate is going to secrete an acidic fluid. That acidic fluid is going to help to neutralize the alkaline fluid and also to create an environment where the sperm are more, more motile. Motile is the ability of cells to move. The bulbourethral glands secrete mucus and another alkaline substance to neutralize the acid coming from the seminal vesicles. Take those ingredients, put them together, and that is semen. So the semen is a mixture of the sperm and the seminal fluid, which this is going to allow fluid to carry the sperm. It's going to include nutrients to allow the sperm to survive. The sperm are not going to have a blood supply, and so they need to have some way in order to get nutrients. And then that al these alkaline secretions are going to neutralize the acidity of the male urethra, and then also the vagina, which has, is an acidic environment. The penis has three parts. There is the root at the base, the glands at the end, and then the body between. So if I go all the way back. Root, glands, body. When the penis is erect, is erect, essentially what is happening is there are sinuses or empty cavities in the penis that fill up with blood and provide rigidity. As a whole, the male reproductive system has four functions. Primarily, it includes the testes which make sperm. That is the primary function of the reproductive system, which is to make sperm. Testes also make testosterone, which is important in the sperm formation, but what we also saw it's important in a number of different functions. It includes ducts that are going to move the sperm and the fluids that go with it. There are accessory glands, which make those fluids. 
and then there is the penis, where the urethra goes through, also allows the exit of the ejaculate and the urine. That's the male. Next is female reproductive system. Female reproductive system includes ovaries, uterine or fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina, vulva, and mammary glands. So we'll talk about each one. So starting from the outside, we have the vulva, which is going to include labium minor, this is labium minus, and labium major or magus. That leads to the vagina. And then up here, we have the uterus and the ovaries. Again, as a point of reference, you have the bladder here. And so again, the bladder is going to empty into the urethra. So this is female uterus. So to kind of orient, this is back here. And so vagina is down here. And so vagina is down here. And at the top of that is the cervix, which is essentially the, the border between the vagina and the uterus. Up here, we have the uterine tubes. One, on each side, there are two uterine tubes, or fallopian tubes. On each side, there is one ovary. Ovaries are where the egg cells are going to be made. On the end of the fallopian or uterine tube are the fimbria. The fimbria are the little fingers here. The purpose of the fingers are to grab a mature egg from the ovary to go into the uterine tube. So where in males, the process of making sperm was spermatogenesis, the process of making the eggs is oogenesis. The egg is an oocyte. And so the making of an oocyte is oogenesis. This starts in the ovaries, but does not end in the ovaries. Just like with sperm, we undergo meiosis, not mitosis. It is more or less the same process, meiosis one, meiosis two. Where the primary difference is, and we'll see this, is remember in sperm formation, we ended up with four sperm cells. Oogenesis is still going to make four, but only one of them is going to persist. The other three are going to go away. And so the process of oogenesis only yields and makes one mature oocyte. <coughs> In the meiosis, the female reproductive system, meiosis two is only going to happen after fertilization. So meiosis one is going to occur, and then meiosis two will only happen if fertilization occurs. The uterine or fallopian tube here is going to take a secondary oocyte. That is the bottom of the chain here, secondary oocyte, is going to take it from the ovary, from the ovary to the uterus. The uterus, where that oocyte, sorry, this is also where fertilization is going to occur. So the uterine tube is going to take a mature secondary oocyte from the ovary, fertilization will happen in the uterine tube, and then that fertilized cell will move to the uterus, which is also called the womb. 
uterus has a number of functions. The uterus is where menstruation is going to occur. This is where a fertilized egg, a fertilized egg is called an ovum. A fertilized ovum is going to be implanted into the uterus, and this is where the fetus is going to develop. The fetus is going to develop in the uterus, and then the uterus is also going to be the primary organ involved in labor and childbirth. So, backing up. Oogenesis occurs in the ovary. A somewhat mature oocyte gets picked out by the fimbria, then it goes into the uterine or fallopian tube. Fertilization happens in the fallopian tube. Once fertilization occurs, that then moves into the uterus and it's going to get implanted in the wall of the uterus. From that fertilized ovum, the fetus is going to develop. One happening, sperm comes along with a secondary oocyte, and then meiosis two occurs. So looking back up, we started with our normal cell, it divided. Only one of them continued on though. One of the two turns into what's called a polar body, which does not function in reproduction. So the one that does continue on is fertilized with a sperm cell. Meiosis two occurs, it splits again. One of them turns into another type of polar body, which does nothing. The other turns into an ovum, which then turns into a zygote, which is the beginning of a fetus. Take a break. We got plenty of time. We'll come back at five after on that talk. in an alkaline or basic environment. But in order for them to function, they need a, a slightly more neutral or acidic. Okay. But if it's too acidic, then they, they can't live. But most spermicides have a drug in them. It's not a pH thing. Okay. There's a compound in there 
and will kill or, or par paralyze from that. Oh. Two million. Two million? Two million I died. But 11,000 died um, what? every month prior to puberty. Google that. Google that wrong. Uh, Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh man. Mm, okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, we'll see. So who did I who did I hand them back? Was it just you two? That explains why everybody got it wrong. <laughs> I don't know if it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday night class.
Dr. Young. How is your research with your livers to get on that? So I, I just today I got what I needed in order to test whether the test, whether what I want to test is there. Is it there? I just got stuff today. Oh. It's going to take me. Does that look promising? I, it, it's a multi-step process, and then you get all, all the data at once. Oh. And so I just I just got some stuff in the mail today. So it's going to take probably till early, mid next week before I have any data. Good luck. Science is slow. <laughs> Science is very slow. What year did you graduate college? <laughs> college? The first time? Second time. Oh, <laughs> when, when, when you got your PhD? 2013. That's it. Oh, it's just I was still in high school. I was still in high school. I was in high school. I mean, I still enrolled here. So that's how long it's taking me to graduate. I was in eighth grade. It took a year and a half break. So that's okay. <laughs> can justify it. Um, I have a question about the grade. But I'd be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think wrong. the quiz 17, are you not quiz 17? You said I got zero out of five. So that's a lecture? Yeah. So I, if I remember right, what it was is... <clears throat> is it the one we just had? Like, it might have been one I just there? handed back. Okay. So I would, what I would look, I think what happened was I had you a sheet of paper where they were lab quiz, but the lecture quiz wasn't there. And so I think what happened is you wrote the lab quiz on a different sheet of paper, but the lecture would never get turned back in. If you can find it, okay. All right. you can have points. Okay. So the check means that it's really okay. Yes. Michigan to Florida for the weather. I'm not moving so to Alaska. I heard on the radio just today about a lady in Alaska who was stealing the, the cart from Walmart. She didn't even make it on the parking lot before the cops got there. What happened? Yeah. There was a lady in Alaska, I heard on the radio the other day, trying to steal one of those like, motor things. The electric cars? The, the little cars at Walmart. <laughs> and you know how slow they go, so it took the cops 10 minutes to get there, and she wasn't even out of the parking lot yet when they got her. She was charged with a felony. Oh, wow. Yeah, anything over a certain amount of dollars is considered a felony. People slip stuff in Walmart all the time. Yeah. Carts. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, that's me too. There's a reason why they're so long. Probably a couple hundred dollars. You think about it. Okay. So now I'm, I'm looking at your grade. It, it's 
Oh. One of the two I just handed back. So okay. I'm guessing one of the two I just handed back only has lab. Hmm. That's depressing. I've never seen a zero like that. <laughs> really depressing. <clears throat> you're looking for is that a quiz that has marked right or wrong, but there's no number on it. There's no, no zero or one, three, or five. Does that make sense? Still waiting until. She left. Right. I was about to say, I thought she left. I seen her walk out. <sighs> All right. So, structurally, female reproductive system. First slide, we have a, a list of structures. Vagina is a passageway <coughs> allows menstrual flow to move out. It allows for the birth of a child to move out. It's also going to be a passageway for sperm and semen to get into the egg to, to cause fertilization. The vagina is the lower portion of the birth canal. Same thing, birth canal is has upper and lower portion. The lower portion is simply the vagina. The vulva is the external genitals of the female reproductive system. Has four parts. The labia majora, labia minora, which we pointed out on the diagram. The clitoris and the mons pubis. The labia are essentially external folds. I'm go back. The labia, the labium is singular, labia is plural. The external folds, clitoris lies just in front of that, and then the mons pubis is the structural part in the front. The mammary glands may not initially strike your mind as being part of the female reproductive system, but that is where we include them. Mammary glands are sudoriferous glands. Sudoriferous glands were sweat glands. Remember, sudoriferous was that generic term for sweat glands. And then there was the mirocrine and the apocrine sweat glands. Mammary glands are sudoriferous sweat glands that had evolved in order to produce milk instead of sweat. Yes, yes. I, say I have said milk all semester. I will say milk all my life. Milk. 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 Saying there is or there should be? There is. There's gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you turn your camera back on? I didn't turn it off. Oh, okay. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's all good. Forever. <laughs> so, if this portion of the video shows up someplace else online, I will know it is one of you <laughs> that have done it. <laughs> Memory glands function in lactation, which is the production and the release of milk. <laughs> mammary gland development, and so the production, the formation of these mammary glands depends on estrogen and progesterone. Both men 
and females, males and females, have mammary glands. But it is the estrogen and progesterone that turn them into a functional organ after puberty in a female. Milk production is stimulated by estrogen and progesterone, but also a hormone called prolactin. Ejection of the milk is stimulated by oxytocin. And so the sucking of a, of a child causes the release of oxytocin, which then causes the milk to be ejected. So the breast functionally is a large fat pad. Fat pad is going to, re is going to be a source of a lot of nutrients. Located in that fat pad is going to be the alveoli, very similar to the alveoli in the lungs. They look very similar. And then that is going to be connected to a mouth duct, which then connects <laughs> to the neck. <laughs> Female reproductive cycle, where it is the male reproductive system is more of a continuous process. Female reproductive system has a reproductive cycle consisting of two subcycles: ovarian cycle, and so this is going to be a cycle of production of those secondary oocytes. And so secondary oocytes are not constantly produced. And then, then there's also the uterine or the menstrual cycle, which is the preparation of the endometrium, the inside surface of the uterus, in order to receive the implantation of that fertilized egg. And so these two cycles are separate, but they more or less happen at a set pattern in time. If they're not correct, if they're off sync, fertilization and then the implantation is not going to happen. Are we born with all of our eggs? Yes. Yeah. So that the ovarian cycle is when they get mature. mature. The, the secondary, so let me back up. These are what the primary oocytes are, are what are always what you're born with. Okay. Then on a cycle, they are converted into the secondary oocyte. <coughs> Both of these are controlled by the same hormone, which helps to keep them in sync, right? If you have one hormone controlling both cycles, it's very difficult for them to get off sync from each other. What was GnRH? The RH, the RH is easy. Release hormone. Releasing hormone. Gonadotropin. Gonadotropin. Releasing hormone. That comes from the hypothalamus. What do we keep saying is the primary function of the hypothalamus? What does it control? Autonomic nervous system. And so these cycles are part of the autonomic, or at least controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Gonadotropin releasing hormone, GnRH, is going to cause the anterior pituitary to release FSH. We learned about that, right? That is what caused the testes to produce testosterone. In a female, rather than causing the testes to produce testosterone, it causes the ovaries to produce estrogen. LH was luteinizing hormone. This again comes from the anterior pituitary. In response to GnRH, this causes ovulation, formation of the corpus luteum, which is part of the menstrual cycle, and then secretion of progesterone and estrogen, which also play a role in milk production, and then also these cycles. So 
So gonadotropin-releasing hormone controls these cycles directly and indirectly through the formation of progesterone and estrogen. So estrogen is sort of analogous to testosterone in men. Estrogen stimulates growth, development, and maintenance of female reproductive system, so structures. This is basically the same exact bullet point from the male reproductive system talking about testosterone. It serves the same purpose, and it causes development of secondary sex characteristics in females. What are secondary sex characteristics in females? Getting a period. Secondary. So right. think Breast. appearance. Breast. Breast. Larger breasts. Right. Wider hips. Wider hips. Hair. Generally, it, it, it causes accumulation of greater amounts of fat <laughs> under the skin, which causes the curves that we tend to associate with a female body versus a male body. So that includes breasts, but also the rest of the body as well. Progesterone works with estrogens in the menstrual cycle to prepare the endometrium. We said that was the inside layer of the uterus for implantation. So that fertilized egg is going to implant into the endometrium which is the inside layer of the uterus. It also works with estrogen to prepare the mammary glands. There is also another hormone called relaxin that re causes the pubic symphysis to become more flexible. What was the pubic symphysis? Cartilage. Yes, yes. I see at least four people who can picture it because they're saying it's this cartilage. <laughs> no, it's this cartilage. Right? That was the cartilage between the two pubic bones. Why does that need to become more flexible? Push up, push up, baby. It'll allow it to stretch a little bit, not, not, not a lot, but a little bit to allow the child to come out. If you're trying to push a child through there, any little bit would help, I would imagine. Also helps to dilate the cervix. What was the cervix? The, between the, uterus the border between the uterus and the vagina. And so, if the fetus is developing in the uterus, it needs to get through that space, through that cervix. So it's going to cause it to dilate. Think of dilating pupils, that's big. Dilation is bigger. And so you always see on TV, they talk about how dilated the cervix is. They're measuring the dilation of the cervix because if it's too small, the child is not, is not physically possible to be born in. <coughs> the female reproductive system is shown, sorry, the cycle is shown in this figure. This figure is more complicated than you need to know. You need to know what is in the bullet points, okay? But I included it because I think it can help you to take those bullet points and really show it in a cycle, okay? And so, the cycle is going to be caused by increasing and decreasing levels of hormones. So what we have down what well, we have two cycles here. We have the ovarian cycle up here. So this is just the cells, the egg, being prepared for fertilization, which is completely independent of the menstrual cycle, which is preparation of the endometrium to receive that fertilized egg. They're independent even though they are occurring at the same time. So the ovarian cycle. <coughs> it's going to take the primary oocytes and then it's going to make what are called follicles. Follicles are essentially mature eggs. Okay? 
that follicle is then going to release a, a part of it, which is the actual mature egg. The mature egg is going to develop inside of a case, essentially, which is known as the follicle. Down here, we have the menstrual cycle. So at the end, the beginning here, we have the end of the previous menstrual cycle. And at the end here, we have the beginning of the next. And so between here, at the end of the menstrual cycle, we have a thin endometrium that over time proliferates. Proliferates is growth. Its proliferation is the division and growth of cells. So the endometrium is going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. It's going to produce hormones and <coughs> the eggs are going to be released from the ovarian cycle. And then <coughs> at this point here, the endometrium is prepared to receive those fertilized eggs. But the endometrium can't continue growing like this. It needs to be renewed. And so the menstrual cycle goes again. We bring the endometrium back down to square one and start over again. <coughs> so ovulation is the release of the secondary oocyte into the pelvic cavity or the uterus. And so we have in the, in the, the cycle, we have a pre-ovulatory phase and a post-ovulatory phase. So before ovulation, in the pre-ovulatory phase, the oocytes are being prepared to be released. They are, are not mature, they have not been released, and estrogen is the primary hormone. In ovulation, that egg, that oocyte, is going to be released. It's going to be caused by an increase in luteinizing hormone. So estrogen is going to maintain this. Luteinizing hormone is going to cause ovulation. And then in the post-ovulatory phase, there's going to be <coughs> progesterone and estrogen produced in very high quantities. That causes the endometrium to get larger and larger, readying it for implantation. If that fertilization does not occur, though, there's a window where the endometrium is prepared to receive that fertilized egg. If it does not happen, the corpus luteum and the endometrium is going to degenerate. If it degenerates, that's progesterone and estrogen fall. Up here, progesterone and estrogen were secreted in large quantity by the corpus luteum and the endometrium. If they go away, the estrogen and progesterone are going to go away. So now we're back in terms of hormones where we started. If fertilization does happen, then another hormone, HCG, chorionic gonadotropin, is going to be released. In that case, the corpus luteum and the endometrium are going to be maintained. It is not going to be degenerated. So what I want to point out here, in terms of these increasing and decreasing hormones, is the basis for the pill, or any of the other hormone-based birth control. These cycles are controlled by levels of hormones. If we artificially add hormones, we can throw them off balance, and so the cycle will stop. If the hormone levels stay consistent, in that those consistent levels tell the body to stay in one part of the cycle, the cycle will stop. 
And so if that cycle does not continue, birth cannot happen. <coughs> so, big picture, female reproductive system has five functions. Number one, it includes, it includes the ovaries. It's going to be produce, the function to produce secondary oocytes and hormones from those ovaries, which include estrogen, progesterone, inhibin, and relaxin. What did inhibin do? Inhibits FSH. Inhibits FSH, yes. Which in turn is going to cause an inhibition of estrogen formation. What did relaxin do? Dilates the cervix. Then there is the uterine or fallopian tubes, which are going to be used to take a secondary oocyte from the ovaries to the uterus. And for the most part, this is where fertilization is going to occur. It does not have to, though. Statistically, this is where it is most likely to happen. After that, these lead to the uterus. This is where the fertilized egg or ovum is going to be implanted. It will sit there, divide, 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 turn into a fetus, and then a child. And so that child will de develop in the uterus. And this is also where contractions for labor are going to happen. The vagina is going to receive the sperm and semen, and is also a passageway for, for the child to be born. We said it's the lower part of the birth canal. And then the mammary glands are going to synthesize, secrete, and eject milk, which is important to provide nutrients to a born child. That's the end. Okay. Can we do last?